Hello. Sorry, I'm going to hold up your lunch in a little while. I'm just going to try to get through this as quick as possible. Uh, my name is Esther, and I am part of the DotWorks team, and I'm an experienced designer. I'm actually the only one on this, um, in this team. So um, we are going to present an app we call uh, Remind Me, and this was our hackathon entry. So before I present um, our app, we're going to go through a little bit about like, what we really discovered about what it means to be part of the civil generation in Singapore. So just a show of hands, how many here are actually under the age of 65? <laughs> and how many of you actually thought about what would happen to you when you reach 65? Mm, not a whole lot. So let's just get a reality check of what it will mean for you. So as we all know, Singapore is aging very rapidly. And nearly one in three people in Singapore will require some form of elder care by 2030, which means it will affect um, the core group of people here in this room. And a lot of people nowadays, um, it's a, two parents are working, they have kids, um, they work late, they can't care for the elderly parents, so they have a maid sometimes to help keep an eye. But sometimes they can't afford a maid, they can't afford to put their parents in nursing homes, so what are they going to do? And what are the other alternatives out there to help them care for their aging parents? So we kind of dig a little bit of digging, and we found this uh, Singtel has a live care app, which actually is a monitoring app. But if you are an elderly parent, how do you feel like it if your kid like, monitors what you do every single day, including when you go to the bathroom? It's quite intrusive, and I wouldn't feel very like, secure about having my privacy being, such, being so invaded. You see, like, no activity since three hours, 18 minutes. You're kind of being tracked like a device. And also, there's another statistic that says uh, more seniors are living alone. And the number of um, seniors who live alone has tripled in the last 15 years. So it becomes kind of hard for us who want to care for our grandparents or parents if we, live, if we don't live with them. So how do we then communicate with them or show that we really care for them? Because we don't want to feel like we are showing too much care or we keep like, calling them up, bugging them, and they feel like, you're invading my privacy, like I can do all these tasks by myself, like why are you offering me so much help to do little things like just, and can go to the doctor myself, like why do you need to hold my hand and go there? Like sometimes they might feel like it's a liability, they're feeling like a liability, they feel like a burden to their own kids who have to worry about caring for them. And hence some people actually feel like they want to move out because they want personal space and they want independence and they don't want to keep fighting with their children about like how to care for them. So it's not true that um, seniors are not tax savvy. In fact, the studies have been showing that the use of tech and internet among seniors are on the rise. And a lot of people in Singapore own smartphones. So senior people can use smartphones, they can use the internet. But how do we then help them with their daily lives and help them achieve the level of independence they desire while still keeping in touch with their children in, and grandchildren in the way that they would like. Because um, I think it was a year back at a robotics hackathon that there was a senior doctor and she made a comment that we shouldn't just go out and make apps just because it's cool and fun. Because the elderly, they require a different level of like, usage and what they really want is to maintain human interaction. So this was actually an article published in the Straits Times where seniors actually get onto the internet, get involved in a lot of apps that young people use nowadays like Facebook and whatnot to keep in touch with their children and their grandchildren because they feel like that's the only way that they can really connect with the generation that is really keen on using tech nowadays. And we also came across that a lot of apps that are sort of designed with the elderly in mind, if you actually um, do an app search for elderly in um, the Apple Store, you come up with a lot of apps that are really geared towards caregivers. There aren't a lot of apps that actually help the elderly with their lives and living independent lives. 
they help their caregivers care for the elderly folks. So it's not really helping them live the kind of life that they want to. So what we want to do is explore an open two-way communication model that allows uh, seniors to live the independent life that they want to, but still have that communication open where if I need help, I'll ask for it, but if I don't want help, please don't bother me. And we also give families and caregivers that um, re the reassurance that they can keep in touch with their parents and they are not really being too intrusive in their lives. They can let the parents live their lives the way they want to, go out with their friends, do what they want, and not keeping like, an eye on them 24-7. So our app will allow seniors to independently manage the lives the way they want to, while letting their loved ones be in the know of their activities without being too intrusive. Uh, we hope that it would increase more meaningful communication with their close circle of family and friends, because as seniors, you, your circle of friends grows smaller and smaller with each year. So this is um, our prototype. Oops, if I can get to play. So it's kind of modeled after, um, oops. So it kind of is modeled after like a reminder, like a diary, like a journal where I can set my own reminders, I can receive reminders from other people, it can be like interactive, it doesn't need to be very static, I can ask questions like, hey, do you want to go for lunch? Hey mom, your show is on at four. And it's also very simple for people to use, where it's very visual, we try to make it as one click as possible, and simply to set reminders for like, oh, I need to go to the doctor, let's go have lunch, I want to let my son know that he needs to accompany me to this doctor's visit, for instance. So it gives them the luxury of feeling that they are in control of their lives without needing someone else to manage their own lives. So this is where um, his son gets the notification, her son gets a notification and this is her timeline. And we kind of design it in such a way that your circle of friends are just very closed. It's not like Facebook where I can go around and add random people. You have to make sure that people want, accept your invite before you can include them in your circle. So it's just a very tight knit community that I'm pretty sure um, elderly folks appreciate because they don't want to just have too many friends. They don't know a whole lot of people at that age anymore. So our prototype is, um, due to the limited time of the hackathon, it's actually just a very um, bare amount of features that we have right now. So some of the features are like, they're allowed to manage their own schedule without uh, much help from people. But there's also a collaboration model where um, I can send you reminders, you can send me reminders, and we can all see that on a shared schedule. And let's say that if I created something, I marked something as done, or actually missed um, marking something as done, um, people who have been shared will get a notification saying that, hey, uh, mom missed her medication at 10 o'clock. Then it's up to the kids whether or not they want to follow up with the parents or just be rest assured that maybe they just forgot to check their Remind Me app. And hopefully it will let the elderly feel like they have a better mode of being able to communicate with their family and friends without feeling like I need to always call them. So some future considerations we have to build upon this app would be to, let's say, have a one-click ability to alert emergency services like the police if they need it and then maybe to create a deep link to other apps where let's say if I set a reminder for a show, it would sync with my smart TV and it just magically turns on. I don't have to walk to the TV and press on or have to go find the remote and figure out how to operate the remote. Um, to create reminders to program or control um, IoT devices. So let's say I want to turn off all the lights in the house at 10 p.m but I don't want to have to walk all over the house to turn it off. So we can program the app to do that. Um, we can share memories with each other. So let's say you want to share memories of your friends and just like put it on their timeline. 
And the last part, which is probably a ways away, but let's say that usage picks up, we can actually have machine learning to predict behaviors and ailments that might surface as our parents age due to the change in the usage pattern of the app. So let's say that my parent suddenly stops using the app and she has actually been very, a very frequent user. So why did she suddenly stop? Like, is she starting to develop dementia? Like, what's going on? So we sort of will, the family would sort of know, like, in a subtle manner that, okay, maybe I need to follow up with my parents and see what's going on with them. So that's the end of our presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Esther. Um, right now. We